I've always practiced every single day to some degree what I've learned. Hey there, you're tuned in to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and this is episode 492 with my guest, Mr. Mike Crooks. My name's Jeremy Lesniak, show host, Whistlekick founder. And what are we doing over here? Well, we're supporting the traditional martial arts. And if you want to know what I mean by that, all the things that we're doing to support traditional martial arts and artists, go to whistlekick.com. That's our online home. It's also the easiest way to find our products. And if you use the code PODCAST15, you can save 15% off everything over there. This show has its own website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. The show comes out twice a week. And the entire purpose behind everything we're doing, we're working hard to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists throughout the world. If you want to help the show, help the work that we're doing, there are ways you can do that. You can make a purchase, share an episode, follow us on social media, tell a friend, pick up a book at Amazon, leave a review, or support the Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick, that's the place to go. You can support us monthly with as little as $2.00. But if you're willing to do $5 a month, you're going to get exclusive content, things that we do only for our supporters. My guest today came through as a referral from a friend. He also trains with another past guest. And this was a different kind of episode. Usually we bring people on to talk about their martial arts stories. And sometimes those guests that come on, they're telling other stories but kind of through the lens of martial arts. But rarely do we invite someone on knowing that the story they have to tell isn't so much a martial arts story, but a life story that exists because of their martial arts training. Is that vague? Absolutely. But I say it this way because I want you to be aware that we don't get into the meat of this story right at the beginning. And I want you to be patient. This episode's a little different than some of the others we've done, but no less important, no less powerful. And if you do listen, and if you've listened this far, I'm sure you will, it'll be well worth your time. So here we go. Mr. Crooks, welcome to Whistlecake Martial Arts Radio. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's a pleasure. It's a joy to have you. You're connected to great friends of not only the show, of past guests of the show, of friends of mine. I mean, there's a lot of intersection going on here. You you, uh, you keep some, as far as I'm concerned, some great company. And I know we're going to get into that and how you got there and, and all that. But I mean, I told you I was going to start this way. Listeners know that we're going to start this way. So let's, let's start this way. How'd you get started with your training? Okay. Well, I, um, my, my father is a uh, second degree black belt in judo. And so I was kind of born into it at uh, three or four years old. I was brought to class and uh, used to do a lot of running around. Uh, and then I got serious about it and uh, been practicing some sort of martial arts throughout my whole life. Wow. And what's kept you in it? You know what I mean? To me, it's kind of... You know, you're, you're, you're talking about, I mean, the reason you started seems pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. Everybody who does martial arts starts. Not everyone sticks around. Everyone leaves. Just about everyone leaves at some point. But you didn't leave. Or maybe you didn't. You went back. I don't know. I it, I would just say it's because I love it. I'm actually a third generation uh, martial artist. My father, myself, and my son, Jack, uh, makes up three generations. What is it about training that you like? Uh, I love everything about it. I love challenging myself. I love the discipline that karate gives you i love i love to work out i love the exercise um i like using my mind in a martial sense you know someone you know makes a move at you and what you can do to protect yourself it's always going to be different i just uh, love every aspect of martial arts training have you had any points in where you stepped away for a little while yeah can you yes, tell I us about, about one of those? You know, maybe, maybe, maybe not the longest one, but the one that seems most impactful as we talk about this. Well, um, going through life, um, you know, my, my first break was my father getting an injury that he was unable to 
teach anymore. Um, and then from there, um, I would say being married um, mm. and raising a family was uh, the biggest thing. Uh, but I, I've always practiced every single day to some degree what I've learned. There's not a day that's gone by that my hands aren't moving or my legs are kicking or thinking of a throwing technique or what have you. Mm. We've had a number of guests who have talked about the importance of that daily practice, even if it's something small. Why is that important to you? Well, I think it keeps your mind and body um, in tune with each other, if you will. Mm. If you stop doing something, you get a little rusty. So I think it's very important to constantly um, train to, to keep yourself a well-oiled machine. And when you look at that daily practice, you know, I think we can all wrap our head around what happens in a class. You know, we're usually there for an hour, maybe hour and a half, maybe the two hour long classes back to back. Some of us train, you know, two or three days a week, some more. But what is that training when you're not in class look like? Um, well, uh, there'd be some heavy bag training. Um, I would be practicing some of my forms. I would be constantly thinking of if somebody was to, like I said, attack me in a certain way, how I'm going to do it. I might work on that technique. Basically, I, I do a lot of um, visualization um, of certain techniques. Will they work? Will they not? Every once in a while, I'll grab my son and I'll say, hey, uh, throw a straight punch at me. I want to <laughs> try this. <laughs> uh, my, my son... My son is a six foot six um, house, if you will. <laughs> That's um, a big kid. How old is he? He's a, he's he's uh he's twenty now, wow. and uh, yeah, he's a big boy. So if it works on him, it's probably going to work. Seems like a a, a fair statement. Yes. Yeah. There 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 might be some some throws, some judo throw, you know, sort of angles that might not work on somebody that tall. If you're if you're much shorter but for the most part yeah it's it's nice to have someone big to to work on stuff with because generally the aggressor is going to be bigger and you know it's just statistically what happens so having that around having that in-house is pretty convenient does he enjoy training yes, with you is, is that as enjoyable for him as it is for you to work together yes it is uh he, he's he's really into it he loves it um and and made me feel really great to know that he loves it as much as he does. He's always practicing. He's always shutting the cabinets for the foot or uh, I can relate to that. <laughs> chasing it, you know, chasing his sisters around and give him a little bit of practice. Everybody uses their training in different ways. Right. I mean, you're talking about training at home and you know, it sounds like there might be a little bit of a fitness element. I I don't, I don't know about you, but every time I hit the bag, if I hit the bag for more than 60 seconds, I feel like I'm getting a, a workout. And I don't just mean training, but, you know, a physical strength kind of cardiovascular thing going on. But we've had a lot of people on the show who have talked about the ways that they've used their martial arts beyond their training. You know, it becomes part of who they are. And it sounds like you're, you're hinting at some of that, you know, talking about family legacy and all that. How does your martial arts surface outside of your training? Well, I, the number one thing is I, I, I believe that gives you a self-discipline. Uh, if you're given a task, um, I think that the ability to focus uh, that martial arts gives you, I think that, uh, you know, in, in myself, and, you know, I'm sure we're going to get to my story pretty soon, but. Uh, it gave me the self-discipline to do and go through uh, just unimaginable things um, that most people probably wouldn't be able to handle. Mm -hmm. Can you can you elaborate? I know we're we're going here. Let's you know, listeners. As you can tell, there there's some things that I know that you don't know, and I'm always sensitive to that. I I, I don't like to just jump into things. Uh, I like to let them kind of come up and, and we're, we're so close to the brink that I'm going to, I'm going to kind of push you there. 
Okay. So I make sure that, that we okay. get there because I, I suspect that on the other side of this conversation, that gives us a lot more to talk about. Absolutely. Self-discipline is something that you learn as a martial artist. You know, I, I see the, the young kids nowadays and they have to sit for a couple of minutes being quiet. Um, I, I think that that's the beginning of the, the self-discipline because karate is a, it's not a team sport. It, 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 an individual sport. It, uh, I, I, you know, I say it as a sport, but you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, it is something that you do on your own. Um, you you get taught by others, and you might have a group that you work out with, but basically, it is an I sport. It, it's something that um, only you can do. Only, you know. You know People can only take you as far as they, as they, as you're willing to let them go. But you, you, as an individual, um, is um, something only you can do to to make yourself better. And if I seemed a little uh, just there for a second, it's because I saw a. Police crews are driving by, and like I explained to you earlier, <laughs> I'm yeah. backed up into a field because um, it's nice and quiet here. It's not always quiet at my house with uh, three teenagers. Um, so uh, <laughs> they seem to have gone by. They they didn't really even notice me here. I'm I'm sorry. Where were we? I just kind of asked you to to expand. You know, you were talking yeah. about the non physical benefits of martial arts and and how it conditions your your psyche mentally um you know giving you self-confidence um i think that um you know a lot of kids nowadays don't have the self-confidence that they used to have um they're not running jumping over fences climbing trees um they, they seem to have a device in front of them at all times um some things that you know, when you do something physically, it gives you a little more self-defense, uh, self-defense, sorry, so, self-respect. Uh, uh, yeah. You, you, and how do you handle that with your own children? Well, like I said, my, my son is, uh, he does take martial arts and uh, he's done scouting. My daughters, are, you know, growing up, they uh, were involved in sports. So I, I think that in keeping your your, your children doing uh, physical activities keeps them out of trouble and gives them the respect for themselves so that they they earn it by um, sorry mm. losing myself here. It's okay. Uh, by by um, by achieving their goals um, and you know in martial arts you know. If you uh, study really hard and you get a new rank, that uh, basically uh, you, you achieve your goal and gives you something to strive for. I think that's just excellent. Hmm. One of my favorite subjects to bring up with the guests, and you know, I'm just we're 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 going to go there. I know we're going to go there. That. I, it's around the negative. It's around the downside that the, the rocks, the stones that life throws at you from time to time. And I find that through having these conversations with martial artists, that those of us who train have this toolkit to utilize that helps us get through tough stuff. We've had guests on the show who've been through pretty much anything you can imagine. And, you know, multiple people who have said that without their training, things probably would have gone really differently. You have any stories like that? I do. I do. Uh, myself, uh, two years ago in 2018, I just turned 50 years old. I uh, uh, wasn't feeling well. And I was going to uh, a doctor. Uh, actually, it was a clinic. I'm sorry. Um, and I was feeling dizzy. And they were treating me for vertigo. And I was actually at a karate class one night and did a forward roll. And um, one of our members said, do that again. And I did it again. She's like, 
I think you really need to go to the hospital. Um, there might be something seriously wrong with you. My eyes were twitching, nystagmus. And uh, I went to the hospital that night. I had a headache like I've never had in my life. And I was um, quickly diagnosed of having um, brain cancer. Uh, I actually had two types of cancer. I had um, esophageal cancer, which metastasized in my brain, um, ended up having three brain tumors. And uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a shock. Mm. That shock feels like an understatement. Yeah. And there were no uh, symptoms prior to that. I was a little bit different of a person than I usually am. Um, I was, we'll call it snappy Mm. at times. Um, And that was pretty much the only thing looking back um, other than being busy there for that short period of time before they diagnosed me. um, That was the only thing that I could find that was different. So what happened next? Uh, Well, I... uh, you know, they, they, they told me what was wrong, and uh, I was given a less than 5% chance to live a month. That was uh, just over two years wow. ago now. I, uh, I said, well, I'm not really done yet. So and they said, so you want to fight? And I said, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we started moving forward in treatment. Um, would you like me to tell you what I've been through? Yeah. As far as? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the first thing they did is they removed, uh, one of the tumors from my brain. Um, and when I woke up from that surgery, uh, it wasn't expected to go well. Uh, they asked me, do you know where you are? And I answered them. And they were just, they, they couldn't believe it, that I was actually able to talk. Um, the next day I was up and walking around. Um, <clears throat> after a stay in a Boston hospital for about, I think it was about 15 days, I went home. Um, shortly after that, I started radiation treatment, um, which was quite an awful experience they actually strap your head to a table and a mask that fits over your head and put gamma radiation into your brain Um, which you know went absolutely perfect they they couldn't it couldn't have happened any better than it did um doctor i had at the time was just ecstatic how well it went after that, um, <clears throat> I went under heavy chemotherapy for my esophageal cancer. And um, most people, as most of the listeners know, uh, they go through chemotherapy, they they get extremely sick, they have all kinds of side effects. Um, and this is where martial arts came in and self-discipline. I woke up every day. I would eat my breakfast and I would walk five miles every single day while I was going through treatment. And um, wait, wait a second, you're doing all this while you're on chemo? Yes. Did you have a yep. different kind of chemo? No, no. I actually okay. um, the the chemo that they threw at me was probably one of the most hardcore chemos that they you can get. Um, and you know, I was given all kinds of prescriptions for drugs and. I never took any of them. I took them one time and I just walked every single day in which uh, basically made uh, made it so I didn't have the nausea that most people have. And, you know, I had um, just drive, I I guess we would call it to uh, survive. You know, I had a family and, um, yeah, you know, and I just wasn't ready to give up. So five miles every single day, um, as I was going through chemo, 
and um, you know the the tumors in my esophagus got a lot smaller from the chemo, and I actually went back into the hospital, and they removed my esophagus, and when they do that, um, they take out the esophagus through your side. They don't open you up. They just kind of take it out and those little snip here, a little snip there, and then they stretch the stomach. So as far as weight gain, um, I'm a lot smaller than I used to be. I went from being a 260-pound man to a 195-pound man. But anyways, the, uh, the surgery was a complete success. Um, I am undergoing, um, I'm still on chemo, but this is a much lighter duty chemo. It's kind of a maintenance. It's, uh, and like I said, two years, I'm still, still kicking. Wow. Pun intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what about the brain tumors? What's going on with those? Uh, well, I had a total of three, and uh, they're they're completely they're gone. Um, my doctor actually showed um, some of his interns the MRIs of my brain, and he showed them the before and the after. And he said, "Tell me what is exactly the same about these two photos of the MRI." And uh, they they couldn't answer it and he said that is the same man which was they they couldn't believe it mm -hmm. usually there's some kind of scarring or what have you and i it, it, like i said it couldn't have gone any better than it did yeah this this sounds pretty um pretty much like the perfect set of outcomes yeah it it Everything that I've been through, um, I consider myself probably pretty much the luckiest person that ever walked the face of the earth. Um, you know, everything as far as treatment went, it, it went better than it should have. Uh, and, you know, a lot of things that people go through when they get cancer, um, you know, such as financial problems or what have you. I, I seem to have kind of skipped through everything. I consider myself a very lucky man. Wow. Now, that was kind of an interesting use of words, you know, um, better than it, sh than it should have. And I, I kind of want to ask about that, that word choice, you know, because you get, you get people, you know, we've had a few on the show and, and I've had friends who have faced cancer and I've had conversations with them. Some of the listeners have been able to hear some of those. And in every case that I've seen when there's a, uh, a when there's survival that maybe, maybe statistically wouldn't be there, there's a why. There's a really strong why. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure family played a part. I'm sure training played a part. But what was the why? What was the why that had you up and walking and facing this and taking control of all of this that happened such that the outcome was obviously not pleasant, not something anyone would choose to go through. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely but not. There are, uh, I think we can say, millions of people out there alive right now who would look at your path through this and say, I would do anything to go through it this way. Well, I think, I think for myself, the biggest drive was, um, uh, I wasn't ready to leave this earth. I was not ready to leave my family. Uh, when you're facing something like this, you're not really worried about yourself as much as you are the people around you. Um, that was my biggest drive, is that I just didn't want to leave them alone. Uh, that's what made me get up every every day at like four thirty, five o'clock in the morning and go for that five-mile walk. Mm. Um, 
How did your family contribute to this? What role did they? I, I, I'm I'm speculating here, but I'm guessing that this was an all hands on deck sort of thing. What were they doing? Yes, they they were. They, my family is extremely supportive. Um, you know, I, I'm sure there was, you know, times when putting up with, uh, you know, you know, dad can't do this because he's sick. Well, like I, I shouldn't say sick, but uh, you know, I definitely wasn't a hundred percent. You know, I said earlier that you know, I didn't have the side effects as most people do, um, but you know that even going as well as it could have uh, you you still have some uh side effects and you know i just wasn't quite the guy i used to be um you know but it definitely was all hands on deck um you know the love and support of my family kind of kept you going um the, the, you know the, they were definitely one of the biggest factors towards me uh, um, saying, hey, I'm not done and I'm going to do whatever it takes, no matter how awful or, um, or how difficult it's going to be. Uh, I'm going to do it for them. Now, obviously, two years isn't that long. You know, if you're still on chemo, you know, I'll be at a, a lighter dose. You know, there's still uh, there's still some risk and, and I don't want my words to um, diminish that that cloud overhead and that you're still facing this but it seems like you've gotten past the majority of it the heart of it such that we can talk about it almost from a, a past tense and i'm curious about then and now before and after what's different in your life in how you approach your day in your training you know, if we were to take a snapshot, you know, say three or four years ago versus now, you know, and, and put some things side by side, what would we see? Um, in, in my everyday life, I am um, much more understanding towards uh, other people and their problems. Um, I am definitely a lot more of a patient person than I used to be. Um, you, you, you cannot cross this river without getting wet. Um, you, 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 you start to see the world in a different way. Uh, definitely, uh, if you were <clears throat> looking at somebody who might be driving really slowly in front of you, <laughs> and you, you think, well, you know, maybe they're not feeling well, or maybe. You know, there's a reason why they're driving so slowly. Um, you're, you're not as impatient as you used to be. You, know, you don't jump to conclusions um, as far as maybe even choices people have made. Um, we all do what we need to do to get through life. Uh, sorry, I think I've gotten off the beaten path here a little no, bit. No, I, I like where you're going. Please continue. Okay. Um, I definitely appreciate things more than I used to. Um, people don't like to think that, you know, we have an expiration date. We all do, unfortunately. Um, so I, I try to enjoy life a little bit more than I used to. Hmm. What about your training? My training? Um, My training is um, pretty much uh, everything to me. I look forward. I, I I go to class three times a week. I look forward to it. I plan my day around it. Um, I I do have knowledge um, through my years of martial arts training. Uh, I do pass along to other people in my class. Um, I do, I do do some teaching at um, Karate International, and uh, I just look forward to teaching and passing on the knowledge that I know. Uh, I like to pass on the knowledge that I know to my son, 
He gets a little bit of uh, private lessons at home sometimes. If we were to pull your kids into a room and talk to them about dad before and after, and, uh, and there was no way you could find out what they were, what they were going to say, what do you think they would say about how you've changed? Um, they'd probably t- say that dad's a little, a little more calmer, mm-hmm. um, definitely more understanding. I think they would say that my thought process might be a little bit slower than it used to be. Mm. You can't have brain surgery and (laughs) radiation and chemotherapy without having it. It kind of goes hand in hand. Sure. Um, So I would say that would probably be the biggest thing that they would, they would say, but definitely calmer Mm. and more understanding. I'm going to, I'm going to ask a question and, and I have no idea where, you know, how you're going to answer this back. Cause I could see it going either way, but I'm inspired to ask this just the way that you're talking about it. Because most people, when they talk about cancer, they talk about it like a four letter word. You know, it's, it's the worst thing that that's ever happened. And you've spoken of the negative aspects very, uh, with, with a lot of compassion to yourself. And you've almost talked more about how other people have had it worse and that it could have been so much worse for you. And here are these good things that have come out of it. Obviously no one's ever going to choose this, but would you say you're better off? I am. I am better off. Okay. Um, I, I, I think a lot of people, one of the things that um, I didn't realize is um, how many friends I had, um, how much, uh, how much people, and, and we'll say how much, how many people really cared about me. Um, and they, they pretty much came out of the woodwork when uh, this went out. Uh, I kind of have a, I don't want to paint a, 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 a false picture, but a fan club um, of people who are um, that were in my life at one time, whether it was high school or um, relationships that I've had in the past who have been extremely supportive to me. And uh, just, uh, you know, most people don't get to see that in their life. And I got to, and it was a, it was a big eye opener that, you know, if you think about it as um, taking a pebble and throwing it in the pond and the ripple effect, the effect that you have as a person on everybody else is just amazing. You, you get quite thoughtful um, uh, and philosophical if you will, um, when something like this happens to you. So, and and just having, just knowing that there's been so many people who are there for you, it's just amazing. It's a feeling like uh, uh, that, a pride that, um, like I said, most people don't ever get to experience. You know, I, I I knew I was kind of taking a gamble in asking that question, because if you said, no, of, of course not. Why why would you ever ask me if I was happy that <laughs> I had cancer? You're a jerk. Uh, and then, you know, you clam up and, and the interview is basically done and we stretch it out and the listeners are listening and thinking, man, Jeremy's the worst. Yeah. But there was, you <laughs> no, know, I've learned. No, not at all. Well, and 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 I'm glad I got that one right. Because it's something that I, I know I'm not going to be able to fully understand that. I haven't been through it. Um, you know, we've all been through our stuff. We've all taken our lumps. And, you know, it's, it's unfair to compare, you know, the worst occurrences of my life to the worst occurrences of your life to someone else's life. You know, the, the, the bad stuff that we all face is, is the bad stuff that we all face. You know, the worst thing relatively is the worst thing. So I think we can, in a, in a small sense, have some understanding of what that can be like for others. 
but just the way you're talking about this, it, I, I, th I think it highlights a pretty fundamental principle of our martial arts training in that it's from the lumps we take. It's from, you know, our, our training partners, uh, missed shots that, you know, that land and leave a bruise or a cracked rib or, you know, when you break mm -hmm. and it doesn't go quite right. Those are the times when we learn the most. We learn when things go wrong so much more than when they go right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I agree with that 100%. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of funny that you say I had somebody, um, uh, miss um well actually it was my mistake I, I made a move into an elbow a couple of weeks ago and had quite the shiner for <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah but I, I i see where you're going with that and yeah absolutely um you know part of um learning is failing or mm -hmm. having something bad happen um, you, you you learn a lot faster um from touching the hot stove than reading the manual that if you touch that hot stove you're going to hurt yourself is there anything that you have to be careful of now i mean do you say not spar or you know wear three helmets if you do kind of a thing uh any restrictions no not really um i do have um some additional parts um that i did not have before this um I have uh, what they call a shunt, which is a drain in my brain that um, runs from my head all the way to my stomach. Um, you know, if, if I take a shot on that, it, it, it kind of ouches a little bit. Um, I do have a port on my, on my left chest um, where they put the chemo in. Uh, if that gets hit, um, that, that hurts as well. I keep those two places pretty well protected. Mm. I always got my hands up. Uh, and, and it happens from time to time. It's not not anything that's ever going to stop me. Um, but yeah, it, th those are the only two things. Um, and I, you know, nutritionally, I have to feed my body uh, a lot more um, thoughtfully than I did before. Mm. Um, because I am, you know, my, my stomach is so much smaller than it used to be. Um, so I have to make sure that I put in plenty of nutrition. Uh, I'm basically, and this is the only way I can really describe it, I'm kind of like a wood stove. Um, if you want more heat out of it, you gotta, you gotta put more fuel into it. You gotta put more wood into it, more logs. Uh, so. Basically, you know, when I, I know I have class coming, I make sure nutritionally I'm ready to go. Hmm. Um, it, it's, it's been a couple of times that I've, I've kind of learned the hard way. Um, there is, um, when, when you have this done, um, you can have sugar spikes. Uh, I've learned to deal with those and, um, Basically, I pretty much got it down now that I never really have any issues. Okay. Do you spar any differently, being that you have uh, additional uh, pain points? Other than um, you know, keeping my hands up a little bit more um, and and ready to defend those areas mm. if need be. If I if I see a, a strike coming that way, I always do let people know it's there. Um, everybody in my class knows it's there. Um, but other than that, no, it hasn't really affected me that much at all. There's a, a group of martial artists that I train with, some of whom I've known for, we'll say my whole life. I mean, people that I, I started training with. And, you know, we do some fairly advanced sparring. And, and of course, you know, almost everybody's got something, you know, somebody's got, everybody's got a bad knee or, you know, this elbow, you know, I, banged it at work or, you know, just whatever it is. And so we were kind of joking around one day about, well, maybe we should put some tape, you know, like some red electrical tape on our gi over these, these areas. And 
we started kind of doing the math and realizing we need something more economical than electrical tape because some of us were going to be held together with electrical tape if we marked out all of those spots. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you've ever seen people wear, um, you know, the muscle tape, kinesio tape, and they just mm -hmm. cover their whole body with it. That, that's, yes. that's kind of what I was imagining would, would happen. It just, the idea of, of you pointing out that just brought that to mind. I thought that was funny. We actually do do that at, at uh, karate oh, school. Okay. Uh, if someone if someone has you know hurt their knee or whatever, they put a a red X uh, with some tape on that on the knee or the elbow or idea. the shoulder, yeah. and, and kind of lets everybody know. And you know we're a tight knit group, so everybody knows. Um, you know, so and so hurt their shoulder, so. Yeah. You know, you always say, hey, how's your shoulder doing today or what have you. And what's coming? But, you know, what's, if we look out to the future, what are you seeing for, for you and for life and for health and for training and family and for anything that you want to look out towards and talk about? Um, well, um, one of my, uh, as far as my training uh, is to continue and to never stop. Uh, as far as my family goes, I'm, I'm just looking forward to spending as much time as I humanly can um, with them. Um, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing my daughters graduate from high school. Um, you know, I know that, like, you know, like I had said before, I probably will have some kind of expiration date. I'm hoping that will go as long as it possibly can. Um, you know, the, the, the worst thing that you could ever do if you have an illness like this is go on the internet. Don't ever do that. Um, <laughs> because, you know, I, I've read, you know, what I could expect as long as longevity goes. And, um, yeah, it, it's frightening. So, um, I'm getting back to it. I, know I would like to see my daughters be married, my son be married. Um, I would like to um, hopefully meet my grandchildren one day. It's, you know, that's the biggest thing. And, uh, you know, grow old with my wife. Sounds great. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. It, and, you know, and, uh, you know, just experience life. Um, I am looking forward in, in, in to the future. Um, you know, it, it's not something that's guaranteed for everybody, but I, I just think that, uh, you know, moving ahead is all we can look forward to doing. One of the things I always ask the guests is to choose the way that we go out, you know, parting words, wisdom, final thoughts, you know, wh whatever that would be. But how, how do you want to close up your episode here of the show? There's, there's so many things I would like to say. Um, I, I, the number one thing is, um, you know, enjoy your life to your fullest. Um, you know, if, if you love doing martial arts, give it your all. Um, and whatever you do, um, you know, whatever sport or, um, Whatever it is, whatever that makes you happy, uh, enjoy it. Um, give it your all. Um, if you have somebody in your life that uh, you love, make sure you tell them. Uh, um, and definitely one word of advice that I could give you uh, is, is that you know tomorrow is not guaranteed for everybody. So, you know, enjoy everything and um, buy life insurance. At the top of the show, I told you that this was a different sort of episode. And now, now that you've heard it, you can see what I mean. Here we have a man reminding us not to waste time, not to take things for granted. Being on the edge of everything and finding a way to pull it back. It was a powerful story and one that hopefully you can't tell, but I can tell 
I was challenged in bringing this story to you, in having this conversation. It hit me hard. And as we talked about it, it hit me even harder. But it was important. And here you have it. So, Mr. Crooks, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to the next time I'm down in your area so we can we can have a chat. Just the two of us. Check out WhistleKickMartialArtsRadio.com for the show notes, the photos, the videos, the links, social media, all that. Sign up for the newsletter while you're there, too. If you're up for supporting us and the work that we're doing, you have some options. Visit the store, WhistleKick.com. Use the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. You can leave a review, buy a book on Amazon, or support the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you see somebody out in the world wearing a Whistlekick shirt or a hat, make sure you say hi. Talk about the show. Talk about the things that we're doing as martial artists, because we are all in this together. If you have guest suggestions, we want to hear them. So follow us on social media. We're at Whistlekick or email me. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. That's it for now. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Bye.